welcome back to Heimlich Hot Rods. Today, we got an old friend back in the garage. Uh, we're supposed to be working on this bed over here, but this is an old customer. I built this truck a long time ago. Uh, he's been driving the heck out of it for years and years now. It's still running great. Uh, just a few little issues we're gonna fix today. Uh, the door handle's broken on it, and uh, couple little minor things so add some brake fluid and bleed the brakes and that's about it so. so she is a dirty dirty girl it's just a small block Chevy pretty stock motor a uh, little summit 600 carb I put on there it'll rock manifold it's got a I believe that's a Petronics distributor if I can't remember right it's not, I don't think it's an MSD um, I did air, vintage air on this uh, power steering, which I might have to get a light down here. So that's half inch angle iron, big gusset in there that I made. And it's all bolted up to the frame there. There's a cross member there, it's bolted to do. And it's a drag link setup. So you can see the shaft runs up there to the bearing and then up to the steering column. And it all works out really well. You can see that it's bolted to both cross members here. So somebody added this later, obviously. This is it's kind of a Frankenstein of a truck. It goes to a Ford top loader. Uh, then I believe it's a Dana transfer case back to a Borg Warner overdrive. So it's got some handles in there going on, that's for sure. So yeah, it's a nice little uh, driver. He takes it to the beach all the time, goes, rides his bicycles. But we're gonna concentrate on this today. I'm gonna show you how to replace this. I'll show you how to get these handles off. They're extremely tricky. Uh, if you've never done these before. See the vintage air, all the gauges and everything. I did the carpet in here. It's been a long time and she's been driven, that's for sure. He's getting ready to get it painted and do a little bit of restoration on it, so I'm gonna button up a few things first and we'll get her back on the road. All right, so it's gonna be really hard to see, but so there's this little retainer washer. Just slide over there. And usually these things are pretty loose, it's so good to, I gotta pick here. So there's a little, Mm -hmm. It's really hard to see. I think I'm gonna have to maybe grab a pair of needle noses. I got it like halfway out on the other side over here. Okay, as soon as I grab my pliers, it falls out. So all it is is a little roll pin that goes through there. And then this retainer keeps that roll pin from falling out. Well, it's supposed to. It doesn't always work out that way. So it's the same on the on the window crank. And there's your little roll pin. Alright, cool. Oh. Get up here. Alright. Now we can get this door panel out of our way. I'll tell you one thing, that door panel seen better days. Alright, we we'll go ahead and take this apart. Alright, there's four screws over here. I already got one out. This one. It's the window channel has to come out. So that's gonna be this one right here. The windows rolled all the way up. And there's a couple more down here. I don't think you can see them. There you go. I think I'm gonna have to take it loose here also uh, to get the rod undone. I'm gonna need a reposition, so I'll do that. Real quick.
All right, so this replacement piece he ordered it doesn't seem to be working either. It wants to catch, but it's not catching. I'm hoping that. Maybe some alignment issue. Um, I'm gonna lube this thing up real good though. All right, I got her all lubed up and she's working good now. So, and it stays locked, so. All right, you're installed. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the outer door handle also. I have a feeling it's not working properly and there are some parts in here that would like to rebuild it. Head over here. So it might fall apart when I take it apart. I think it's a 3 8 up in here. I think it just needs to be lubed up. Feeling tight and dirty. Tight and dirty. Most of the time, these old vehicles just need a little lubrication. They just get dried up, so that's working fine. All right, I'm gonna try and slide this in uh, up behind that channel. So let's get these screws in. We'll get our rod back aligned. So I was having issues with this staying locked. And it turned out it was this. This is an aftermarket, I think. Because um, the original one that we got for a replacement is a push button. So I think I'm going to keep it with this one. So what, what the issue was is it, it the rod spins like this. So it was just twisting a little bit to where it was almost unlocking it. So basically I just took a pair of pliers down at this end, tweaked the rod, and now it's working fine, so you move this around, everything, it doesn't go anywhere. So we'll readjust this, and everything should work fine. Alright, so everything seems to be working now. One of these. Staying locked. Put her back together. All right, so we still haven't perfected this yet. We got a lot of play in this right here. So what I did is I cut a washer. I'm gonna try and all right. So I don't have any more real adjustment in that, and I'm wondering what's going on. So I started looking at the door. Let's see if we can get this door readjusted. That was pretty easy. It's already looking better. Let's tighten that up. Get right. These old uh, cars are a little finicky, but she's 
it's working right now. So, no more tie down keeping the door shut. Interior all back together. So we're gonna figure out what's next on the list. All right, well, it's Saturday. I haven't really been filming much. Um, I'll show you what I've been doing. Here, steering wheel was coming loose about every 50 miles, he said. Didn't have a lock nut on it for some reason, so I put a lock nut on it, that should be okay. Um, brake reservoir is really small for this disc brake conversion, so I added a external reservoir so we can actually see the fluid since the master's down on the fr uh, frame. And this is my brake bleeding, one man brake bleeding contraption. It's a couple air cylinders, a couple springs, it's got a little blow off valve, and it's hooked to my air compressor through this. So that's my uh, my air foot, I guess you can call it, my air leg. Uh, it works really good. I've been using this for years, built it out of scrap. Just thought I'd show you guys. showed bleeding the front brakes there but whenever you're bleeding a system you always want to start at the furthest from the master cylinder which is usually the back and uh, work your way forward so that's what I did but I only showed the fronts so uh, brakes are working here we go All right, well I think this is the last thing tell my struts very nice zero room behind this dash to get to anything so this may take a while I'll get I've back been to working you. on the speedometer now and I've got Half the dash ripped apart. I got two screws out of this side, the nuts on the back. And now I gotta get to these, and these are the hard ones. So, here we go. All right, so we got it loose. I ended the speedometer cable first and so we could turn here and get to our fuel wires and it looks like it's only got fuel and temperature it has one and fuel has two so we'll get these fuel ones undone first and then we'll see if we can rotate the other way get that one off and then we'll see how we're gonna maneuver this thing out here. Alright we have success that was really tricky and I had to sneak it out through here I couldn't even get it out any other way as you can see what you call a rat's nest. That's why uh, when I do the restorations on these cars, I usually rewire them. This one we did not rewire. This was kind of a more of a drivetrain restoration. And I did undo the negative side of the battery because I had the ignition switch out, so I didn't want to arc that and um, any other wires behind there. Went ahead and took a couple seconds and taped this up because it's going to be a tight squeeze getting it. Up in there, so here we go. All right, we're in there. I just needed two hands. I gotta grab the right size socket. These are different. I should have taken these out before I put it in here, but you know, sometimes we just don't think things through all the way. That wasn't too difficult. Two to go. All right, I just took her around the block. Um, speedometer is working good. I couldn't drive it and film stick shift at the same time. So um, fuel gauge seems to be working, and the temp gauge, the dummy gauge, isn't hooked up, so it just reads hot. But there's a another temperature gauge down there that reads fine. So. Everything looks good. Let's get this thing out of here. If you uh, enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Uh, if you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and that bell. And we'll be back uh, in a couple days with some more on this bed. Thanks for watching. Heimlich Hot Rods.